Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. These podcast episodes with Will and his guests provide you with insights on how you can transform your excuses into results to benefit yourself, your family, your friends, your community, society, humanity, and the universe with what Will calls the ripple effect. Will's mission is to empower one billion people via the ripple effect and intends that you'll become another person to add to the count having listened to this episode. So John, welcome to the show. Will, fired up to be here. Thanks for having me, brother. Really looking forward to, to our conversation. So um, what, one of the things that I want to get stuck straight into is you have Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's arguably one of the most successful podcasts on the planet. I absolutely love it. But what, what I love the most, I, I think what I love the most, there's lots of things that I like about it. What I love the <laughs> most is, is how it came about. And I, I personally had what I call my lightning moment, which is this big moment eight years ago, ironically, sort of similarly to you, mm. and knew, right, I'm going off on this different tra- trajectory. And, and you had a, a similar moment driving your car into work, right? I did. I did. I mean, basically, you know, I was living a great life, or I should say a good life. You know, I mean, I had done all the right things with high school and college. I was an officer in the army for eight years, served with a lot of great Brits over in Iraq. Um, it was really just kind of on that trajectory. And then I kind of went into this like six years of just trying things out in my mid twenties to early thirties, which I think is great. I think a lot of people should do it. I, mean, I think the more things you can taste and try and the more variety you can give yourself, the better idea you get about what really works for you. But all these things I was trying, commercial real estate, law school, finance, it just wasn't clicking with me in the level that I needed it to, to commit a career, a life to it. You know, there's one life that we have. So, you know, frankly, I just said, I'm not going to stop learning. That's going to be where I maybe have my version of your lightning moments. And I was listening to audiobooks, reading business books, and I stumbled on the podcasting and I just fell in love with this medium of being able to jump on a call with somebody like in you know, in England and here I am in Puerto Rico and it feels like we're in the same room. And, you know, now people can watch this tomorrow, next month, 10 years from now. Like I have people listening to podcasts that I created eight years ago, which is fantastic. And I love it because there's such great value in those episodes, especially when you kind of create evergreen content where it's not like super specific, like news or sports and stuff like that. So I had the aha moment that podcasting was a great medium. And I decided to launch the first daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. And that was almost 3000 episodes ago. And those 3,000 episodes have, have included some incredible people. So Tony Robbins, Seth Godin, Gary V, Tim Ferriss, um, just to name a few. But one, one of the things that um, I, I think is particularly interesting is because you've got a, on your website, you've got a, like a timeline of, of what you did. And really early on, you, you reached out to Seth. And I, I don't know if you got him on the show straight away or you certainly reached out to him. Um, so what, what I'm interested to in know is what, what was your vision at that point then? So yes, you knew you wanted to do daily podcasts, but what was your vision for Entrepreneurs on Fire? My vision was, hey, there's a lot to be learned from people's biggest mistakes. And that's what I wasn't hearing on current shows. People weren't asking the question of what was the time that you just completely missed the mark, where you failed utterly, where you fell flat in your face. You know, a lot of these episodes and nothing wrong with this either, because you learned from this too, but we're just talking about their successes. Like, oh, why are you so awesome? How are you so successful? What's making you so awesome and great today? And that's a valuable, valuable thing to learn. But I was like, why are we talking about failures and struggles and obstacles and challenges too? So I wanted to bring that into my episodes that I wasn't really hearing up there in the marketplace back in 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, so that's what I was looking to do, be a little bit different. In fact, you brought up Seth Godin. Um, when I interviewed him and I asked him that very question, what was your worst moment? He told a story about how he was actually arrested on the AOL campus and got kicked off by security. And at the end of the episode, he was like, wow, John, like I actually never told that story before publicly. Like, this is really cool. So then when the episode went live, like he was sharing it with his audience because it was, it was a story that he hadn't talked about, but he thought needed to get out there in the world, but he had just never been asked a question. So that's where like the unique side of things comes in. Like if you're going to start anything, a podcast, a YouTube show, a physical product, whatever it might be like what unique value are you bringing within that content you're creating love that and and on that note then so r- rather than talk about your mistakes and your your entrepreneurial mistakes and lessons that you've learned what i'm interested in to know is what is something that you've done in your life or in your your professional career that you've had maybe a lot of shame or guilt around 
Man, shame or guilt. That's kind of uh, two big words. I don't really know if I've had any shame or guilt around things that I've done in my business career. I mean, there's definitely been things that like I've been disappointed with how they've turned out because they've been failures, but I don't necessarily feel shame or guilt around those big failures that I've had. So um, I guess I'm gonna have to plead the fifth on this one. So the uh, on that note then, so for, for you, you said you've had failures and for a lot of people, oh, yeah. they when they have failures, and this is where I was interested to go with it, is that when they have that failure, they have the sh- they have the, sh- the shame because they're like, I've failed, I'm a failure. They take on that identity or they have the guilt because they feel like they've let somebody down because they've failed. So um, w- what's been a failure of yours, a standout failure? And then what was your what was your thinking around it that for you meant that there was no shame, there was no guilt that enabled you to? to yeah, I guess I'll hit the second part of that question first, because for me, the reason why there was really no shame is because I was in the middle of every day interviewing people about their failure. So I just knew it's part of the game. Like this is what happens when you push the envelope and you try new things, when you get outside of your comfort zone, you're going to fail. And so like, if you're not failing, by the way, that's actually something to kind of be shameful about because that means you're not trying new things and, and, and you know, pushing the envelope and getting out there and, you know, trying to change the world because you're just staying in your comfortable little zone, like wherever that might be. Um, so I've always been like very proud of getting out there swinging the bat. And, you know, when I failed, again, I've been disappointed because I want things to not fail. I want things that succeed, but I'm not disappointed by it. I mean, but I'm not like really shamed or guilted by it because I'm like, oh, well, this just means that I'm pushing the envelope like I want to. So a great example for me was I thought that I was going to like launch this all done for you podcast servicing platform back in 2013. I was going to call it pod platform, where it was like a done for you podcasting service. Like, well, you record your audio, you send it to me, my team does the rest. And hey, there's many, many companies right now that are doing this and they're doing really well. Some are crushing it. And we recommend some great companies that do this stuff for you right now in 2020, when there's, by the way, a hundred thousand podcasts being launched every month. Back in 2013, different area, different time. It was just, it was too early. It was a great idea too early. So it failed. It just did not get any traction because there were just not enough people who were podcasting that were interested in having a service like that. And, you know, Podcast monetization hadn't been proven yet. You know, I've now generated a hundred thousand dollars plus in net profit 87 months in a row. So, like, I've proven the monetization table for podcasting. Other people have. Spotify's dropped nine figures on Joe Rogan, undisclosed subs for Michelle Obama, Prince Harry, like, fill in the blank. Um, I mean, like, monetization is here for podcasting. So, people are willing to invest in their podcasts. But back in 2013, they weren't. And so, I was just early. And I shifted, I pivoted, and I launched Podcasters Paradise, which is still today the biggest podcasting community in the world, teaching people how to create and grow and monetize your podcast. So I shifted from that failure into what is our biggest financial success. Love that. Thank you. And well, one of the key things that I took from that quite early on was you said that because you're in that environment of so many people talking about the failures for you, it was it was just like, well, this is just part of what success is, right? In order to become the the success that you might want to be, you, it's, it's just part of it, which is- Yeah. Uh, and once you achieve success and you want to keep achieving higher levels of success, which we've been striving for the past eight years to do, you're going to continue to have failures along that route. And that is completely fine. So you, like you said, we've had- is it over 3,000 or nearly 3,000 podcasts now? Nearly. Nearly, nearly 3,000. Um, and I, I know you speak quite publicly. The uh, uh, One of the key things of being able to do that is that you've learned how these successful people and interesting people set and achieve their goals. So my question for you is rather than ask the, the okay, well, what, what's the, the one most common thing? What's one of the things that when someone said it to you, you were like, hmm, no, I, I don't think so. And then maybe months or years later, you've adopted it and then you have introduced it as part of your, your lifestyle. Well, one thing I just want to share that people have said and I've heard them say over the years that I think is just not um, good advice at all is fake it till you make it. And I see a lot of people trying to do that. And I understand the philosophy behind it. But unfortunately, like we just live in a world where to me, transparency, being genuine, taking people along with you for your journey is much more impactful and is much more of a successful path to take than faking it till you make it. Because as soon as you've like fooled somebody and they find out, they'll never trust you again. So like, why would you even try that in the first place? Like just from day one, say, hey, this is day one of launching my podcast. I have no listeners. 
I'm not good at podcasting, but I'm hoping to grow something special here. So I hope if you're listening, you're along with me for the ride because this is what it's all about. And boom, take it going forward. Now, on your question is, you know, what has been some advice that I've adopted over the years? You know, it's, it's really it comes to an Albert Einstein quote, which is, try not to be a person of success, but rather a person of value. And I was trying to be successful. Like I was chasing success, trying to be a success. And it wasn't really clicking and working for me. But when I shifted over the years and adopted that mentality of just being a person of value, that changed everything. And like, that's to me, the real concept that people need to understand. I love that. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm going to bring it up because I think in, in today's world with Instagram and social media, it's very easy to fake it or, or give off that impression. But one of the things I think is really unique and, and cool actually that you do is on your website, you have your monthly bank statements or your, your breakdown of your finances. And that's not to, to gloat and show off how much money you're making, I'm assuming, but it's for that reason of showing, hey, look, this is this is what's possible. This is what can be done. And um, th this is this is where we're at, I'm assuming. You're assuming correctly. I mean, back in 2012, when I was like, should I launch an online business? Like, can you make money? I found Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income who was posting his income reports. And I was like, oh, wow, you can make money being like a genuinely nice person that's just delivering great value. And I was inspired by that. And I said to myself, if I ever get to the point where I'm generating real revenue with my business, I want to be that same beacon of light that Pat was to me, to other people. So for 87 months in a row now, we've been publishing our income reports and it's not all cherries and rainbows. Like literally, like we share our biggest failures every month too. Like we've had some doozies over the last few months, you know, specifically, we've, we've had to really talk about some of these big failures that we've had because they were failures. And people love hearing that as well, because they can see like, wow, even though John is eight years in, you know, over $20 million in revenue made, like he's still making big mistakes. And I am because I'm still taking big risks and I'm still, you know, really getting into this type of mindset and headspace. So I just think it's critical to realize that, you know, when you're taking people on your journey, you're being open, honest, and transparent, showing them your successes so they can emulate those successes, but also showing them the failures so that they can avoid the failures that you've made and that we've made. That's where you're providing additional real value. So we also bring our CPA, our accountants on, and he gives a tax tip. We bring our lawyer on and he shares a, a legal tip for entrepreneurs. So it's like a very valuable encompassing income report that we release once a month. Yeah. Love, love that. Um, so in, in terms of um, the, 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 the guests that you've had and the, the things that you've learned, what is one, I know there's been so many, but what is one that just stands out in your mind as, as one of the, the most amazing conversations that you've had? I had a great conversation with Aaron Walker back in the day on going from being successful to significant. Because like at the time I talked to him, I was very successful. I've been running a multi-million dollar year business for multiple years, but his conversation about bringing that success into the world of significance was huge. Thank you. So for, for people that are thinking, right, I, I want to find out more about you and they, they want to find out what's next. I mean, what, what is next for Entrepreneurs on Fire? Well, I spent all of 2020, the quarantine year, writing my first traditionally published book. I partnered up with HarperCollins, which is one of the top uh, five big publishers. And we put together a dream team and I've written and I'm about to launch um, a book that I've titled The Common Path to uncommon success. And it is a distillation of the eight years, the 3000 interviews I've done with successful entrepreneurs. I've boiled it down to 17 steps that any person can take and they can follow these steps over these 17 chapters to achieve their version of uncommon success. So I'm very passionate about this project. I'm very proud of it. Pre-orders are available right now um, and pre-orders mean everything for our successful book launches. So if anybody wants to go check out our pre-order opportunities, we have killer bonuses. I mean, hundreds of dollars in real value of bonuses, you know, if you pre-order like a $15 book. So check out uncommonsuccessbook.com. Uncommonsuccessbook.com. I'll put that in the show notes. And just one thing on that really quickly. So you're talking about you evolving and developing. I, I'm, I, I understand that you had the book cover done and then you decided, actually, we're going to change the book cover. So what, what was the what was the reason behind that? Why did you decide to evolve? Um, you know, honestly, just the people that are on my team said we can do better and we did better. So I'm really happy we did. 
Love it. Okay, well, John, thank you so much for your time. I'm super grateful to have you on the show. Everyone that's been listening to this, you can find out uh, more about John and Entrepreneurs on Fire and the new book that's being released in the show notes. So head to the show notes and you can find out more about that. Um, John, thank you so much. Look forward to speaking with you again soon. Um, Thanks, Will. Much appreciated, brother. And everyone else has been listening to this or watching this. Thank you. Until next time, make it happen. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. Make sure you join Will's free Facebook group, the Make It Happen community. Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. Until next time, make it happen.